long delayed movie sequels. Worst idea ever? Or just the worst idea of the century? Find out on this week's episode of Angry Nerd. Before we start, you should go follow me on Twitter at Angry Nerd Wired. You can witness a blistering Twitter throwdown I had with this guy, Chris Baker, about whether it's wrong for me to hate on all prequels. This handsome but slow-witted individual is trying to argue that classics like Godfather 2 and X-Men First Class are prequels. Sorry, moron. One of those is a hybrid prequel sequel, and the other is a reboot, so they do not count as evidence in favor of prequels. Anyway, enough about prequels prequels. Let's get stupid. So I'm watching the trailer for the new Jim Carrey movie, and it's stirring up distant memories of a movie that I dimly remember enjoying two decades ago. I dug around in the attic, I still have a copy. <sighs> Dumb and Dumber, I, oh geez, this was due back at Hollywood Video in 1996. Dad's gonna kill me. Why does this sequel leave me so cold? I, I love the Farrelly brothers and their extremely logical style of humor. Sorry, did I say logical? I meant scatological. And I savor the chance to see Jeff Daniels take a break from all that pompous speechifying on the newsroom. I think I blew that speech. To embrace his inner dolt. But come on, Dumb and Dumber 2 really should have appeared around the time of the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Not now. It has missed its historical moment. With sequels, you have to strike while the iron is hot. Just look at Sin City Dame to Kill For. It's shaping up to be the biggest bomb of 2014. That's probably because nine years have elapsed since the first Sin City. A sequel would have been hotly anticipated if it had appeared in, say, 2006. But by now, that anticipation has gone as cold as the glare of a White Walker's mother-in-law. When a movie appears so long after the last entry in a franchise, you can tell that no one involved really had a burning desire to continue the story from the original. The sole motivation to make it was clearly... something else. Can't quite put my finger on it. Anyway, consider that all of these recent sequels appeared more than a decade after the last entry in the series, and they all left me wondering if they were really worth the wait. Seeing that list, it's just a little bit harder to work up any excitement for the forthcoming Jurassic World, or even Star Wars VII. Now, long delayed sequels aren't uniformly terrible. They can work when they don't try to just paper over the time delay, but address it directly in a way that resonates. See, Toy Story 3 was worth the 11 year wait because it was about the passage of time. We see children becoming adults. We see the toys passed on to a new generation of children. And the 1986 film Color of Money was a worthy follow-up to the 1959 classic The Hustler because it had Paul Newman dealing with the same sort of cocky young guy that he portrayed in the first film. Look at little Tom Cruise. I just wanna pinch his cheek and warn him to never Ever, ever, ever jump on a couch. Maybe Dumb and Dumber 2 will mine new forms of hilarity from the special dilemmas that morons face as they become parents and enter middle age. I I want to believe. Boy, I'm gonna be a dad. Ah! But how can I? I? I've seen Godfather 3. I've seen the two Jakes. See, the better the original is, the tougher it is for the long delayed sequel to live up to. On its own terms, Psycho 2, it was a decent B movie, but stacked up against the greatest horror film of all time, it's just pathetic. It could have been twice as good and it still would have seemed unworthy. Huh. Actually, the fact that Dumb and Dumber 2 isn't a timeless masterpiece might actually bode well for this sequel. See, it, it has a lot less to live up to than Psycho 2 did. I mean, let me know in the comments if you disagree, but to my mind, Dumb and Dumber pales beside the Farrelly Brothers' brilliant kingpin. Mwah. Now that movie was a flawless jewel with a million facets. Kingpin 2 would be a sacrilege. What 1990s movie would you like to see get a sequel? Make your case down in the comments and I'll critique your arguments. Oh, let me stress that long delayed sequels are only bad in movie land. Long delayed TV reboots like the recently announced Twin Peaks are great. I'll finally learn what happens in the White Lodge. I'm hoping that Twin Peaks show within a show, An Invitation to Love, gets a reboot within a reboot. Oh, and check out my collaboration with Battle Damage. They graciously agreed to destroy an object of my choosing. Are you excited? Let me know in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to the Wired channel.